What is up, everyone? Jack Slater, Magnus, and this is the Comic Corner, Outlaws Corner. And uh, today we're going to be talking about something that's more Magnus's area of expertise, since he comes from more of the realms of the magical stuff. Yeah. And um, magic in this world is a, a card game, but in other realms it's other stuff. Yeah. And uh, magic itself takes multiple forms. It does. Yeah. And um, what I'd like to talk about is Magic Gathering with Dwarves, which we've mentioned in the past. For the longest time, Woods of the Coast, Magic Gathering, has hated dwarves. Racist bastards. Very much so. Uh, for, I'd safely say, two and a half decades, the dwarves had either been no-shows or have had horrible lives. Yep, or just minuscule appearances, too. Yeah, so it really starts off <coughs> with two realms. So the first one, Dominaria, which a lot of the main stories happened for like pretty much the first decade and a half of Magic, where um, it actually a lot of the stuff takes place prior to the stories, where there's this uh, civilization called Thran, where they pretty much find out it's effectively um, nuclear power, you know, um, but it's magical, obviously. And what happens is, just like how nuclear power has radiation, so does this. And it starts poisoning uh, people who are effectively poorer, which is going to be not the wealthy humans. So it's like in a <clears throat> Final Fantasy VII when they start tapping into the life force yeah. of the planet. Yeah. That's actually you know my Final good. Fantasy VII. That is actually a very good allegory to it. And so, you know, the powerful benefits and the people who are weak don't. And so uh, a lot of the races suffered from it. And uh, the big bad of that time, I, uh, a Yogmoth, who was a very much so racist. Uh, I, it's hard to say if he was racist because he honestly believed it, or if he used it. For, he absolutely used it for political power. He was effectively the authority on the healthcare system, and he orchestrated it to where he became the authority of everything. You know, he kept on taking pieces of the society, making himself boss. Well, that's how an authoritarian ruler works. You know, they yeah. get peace and they just keep adding. And yeah, and he fully was aware of what was causing the sickness of all of these races. And he had the cure, but, you know, it's limited supply. Only certain individuals get it. And, you know, oh, things keep on changing, so you have to keep on needing me. And, uh, that like, sounds familiar. Yeah, the Minotaurs, uh, to some extent, the Centaurs, uh, especially the Dwarves. Uh, the Dwarves tend to be very close-knit uh, family mm -hmm. units that huddle in cold, dark places. <laughs> so it, it affected them very bad because it wasn't explained properly. Not Like, if I have radiation poisoning, I'm, it's not really going to affect you unless you get a little bit of the radiation on you. But this is also magical. It was also a little bit of an actual disease. Yeah, like a plague. Yeah. I hate to keep going back to Final Fantasy VII, but it was the same way. Mm -hmm. It started and off as some poison, then it, it changed. Yeah, and it really screwed over the dwarves. And eventually, due to political shenanigans, Yogmoth gets kicked out. He gets he. They don't execute him like they should have. He instead gets exiled. So he actually goes out into frontiers. Nobody, like these people, the civilizations don't actually know what he looks like because you know, he's all the way up there and it's not like they're on TV or something like that. Of course. So, you know, the sickness is still there. It's like, oh, I'm this great healer that can heal you all. And he, what he did was doing horrible um, experiments during this time of magic. There were these mutant goblins and stuff like that because of his shenanigans. A lot more died. And then everyone's like, wait a minute, this fool's Yogmoth. And so, pretty much all the races were like, we're going to murder this fool. But at that same time, Thran, the great empire, was like, oh, Yogmoth, we really need you right now because, you know, he orchestrated stuff. And it's like, please come back, we're sorry. And then he was right back on top, and all the non human civilizations got together and raged war on Thran while everyone's also sick. And it, it just snowballed. Yeah, spiraled out of control. Yeah, eventually he lost. And everything got worse. <laughs> I mean, that has nothing to do with dwarves, so not getting to that part. But eventually, the dwarves had to—I can't remember the island name—but they actually uh, moved to a certain island on Dominaria, which had these fools called the Chainers, where they used dark magic to make people their minions. And like the Please. last, the last great dwarf leader, um, Bolthar—I want to say his name was. 
uh, who was also a barbarian leader as well. Yeah, I think they made a card of him. Yeah, they made two. They made yeah, the, the regular one and of black, him, I had and the black one was when Chainer got to him. And so, like, so the dwarves kept on suffering. And a few years back, when they went back to Dominaria, which they hadn't done for a long time, didn't print one single dwarf card, which are they extinct? <coughs> Maybe they also just might not be important enough for magic to put them in there. They might have actually forgot they're on the Dominaria because they're so num their numbers are so few. <sighs> yeah, fuck that. I hate magic. Like one of the reasons magic bothers me is they made fairy tale creatures and they wouldn't do anything with the dwarves. They said that they based it off D and D. D and D has high regards for dwarves. Yes, dwarves have been in every major book. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know a fair amount of history about dwarves. Yeah. Uh, some say they're from eggs. Some say they're from natural births. Dwarves don't, women don't have beards. Just saying. Want to say that? Maybe they have an increased rate Stride of bearded women. You know. No. Uh, they like beer. Yes. Meat off the bone. You know, like, I, I enjoy the dwarves I love. You know, I play D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. I love playing dwarves, you know. Yeah. And I've always thought they've been one of those races that were crapped on. Yes. A fair amount. Even in Lord of the Rings, sort of. Um, so the elves were the bad guys. Well, like in The Hobbit, for example, when they, they made the long, long, long version of The Hobbit. Mm -hmm. You remember sitting through all three? Of, did you sit through all three of those movies? No, I watched the cartoon like a, a, any good person would. <laughs> yeah, well, I sat through all of them. Yeah. It had so much. I have the book, too. It had so much storyline that wasn't in the book. Yeah. And an elf chick kind of falls in love with a dwarf it's oh sorry spoilers but uh it's just it's just weird that that the dwarves couldn't do anything by themselves you know it's just mm -hmm. it's and the cartoon the one that you mentioned the one that they made in the 70s yeah that one was great yeah the music was great though too yeah here's to the king under the mountain but yeah and actually you're talking about uh a lot of the dwarf uh creatures that were first printed in like alpha and stuff like that um some of them have militant capabilities, like if they were blocked by an orc, their power would increase so mm -hmm. that they were trained against specific enemies. There were a few of them where um, I want to say they couldn't uh, like block a weaker creature, so you know, that one had like honor. And um, their color identity is uh, red because they live in mountains. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. And mountain is... Intricate color. caves. Yes. So the second plane... That dwarves got royally screwed at, and this was right around the same time, not in the timeline of magic, but in our timeline when the stuff was coming out. There was Algratha, which was actually originally supposed to be the adventure plane, which eventually became Zendikar. Where, um, so back in the day when planeswalkers had these wars and they summoned monsters, if one planeswalker died, those monsters that were summoned were stuck there. After the mending, those if a planeswalker died and they summon monsters, those monsters go back to their home plane. So this is pre-mending. Two planeswalkers were fighting. I don't know if they actually revealed who they were, but one of them summoned an entity called Baron Sangir, who was a very powerful vampire. <laughs> the one who summoned him died. Baron Sangir is stuck on Olgratha. And he's just like, cool, my, my, I could work with this. Lemons, I'll make lemonade. Yep. And so uh, there what was a dictator does. Yep, there was a great, powerful dwarf kingdom there, and uh, he came in, and I don't know if he killed the king, but he stole the daughter, you know, bit her. Uh, this is Irene saying here, made him, made her his daughter. It's very creepy. He took this old lady. Oh, you know, that's his grandma now. Um, it's 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 really weird, but um, and he pretty much commits genocide on dwarves, and the dwarves are like, "Hey, other nations, you want to do something about it?" And just like in Lord of the or in the Hobbit, where uh, the dwarves are like, "Hey, elves, you're right there. Did you want to do something about this dragon?" It's like, "Nah." So and the other nations had a chance to take on Baron Sanger when he wasn't powerful enough, and together with the dwarves. But now the dwarves are they're not wiped out, but they're kind of. Not doing well. All right, that's another thing. The Lord of the Hobbit movies, uh, Hobbit movies. I'm sorry, Lord of the Rings, but Hobbit, is that the the King Oakenshield became consumed with the gold. You know what I mean? Became mm -hmm. crazy by it. Yeah. In the move, in the cartoon, in the book, it's more of a political thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they have all this clout and power, and they want to hold on to it for a few more seconds. Yeah. And Oakenshield's main problem that I saw 
is that he didn't cut in the humans. Yeah. I would have cut in the humans. Slew the dragon. Yes, I would have cut Bart and his people in. Yeah. Because they're part of the lake community. Yeah. The elves could go fuck themselves. They oh, yeah. Put, and if you guys haven't read the book, they threw them in prison. They did a lot of messed up shit. That was them. one of the dwarves' arguments where it's like, why yep. should we help you? Number one, you didn't help, help our nation when you could have. Number two, you imprisoned us when we were trying to make things better. Yep. So that's my opinion on that. The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, the elves are the villains. Like, it's horrifying. Although my favorite part in the cartoon, and they don't so much do this in the movies, mm -hmm. I like when the humans, it's like that one scene where like, kill the dwarves, kill the elves, keep the gold for ourselves, and the armies are moving in, yeah. and Gandalf's right in the middle going, hold, there is a new enemy. Yeah. And it's those orcs riding those big old ass wolves, and then all of a sudden... The, oh, the wargs, yeah. And then all of a sudden, the, the dwarf turns to the, the human and goes, Oh, my, my most loyal friend and compatriot, mm -hmm. we must stand together yes. to fight this terrible curse. And the elves like, And my men and my bows are with you, too. Yeah. Funny how alliances are made through that, huh? Yeah. I mean, that was, like, I remember being small and laughing my ass off. Like, that's how peace is made. Yeah. So, yeah, but, and as far as magic, so we dealt with quite a bit of the history. Um, we didn't really get to see dwarves again until f four of them were printed in Shadowmoor. Yeah, they made mention of them in Mirrodin here and there. Like, mm, like Did they mention them in Mirrodin? Because like, like little quotes, them. like this dwarven person said that this is dangerous, or it was like one of these... There weren't any dwarves on that plane, but they came from different planes. Yeah, like it was so, just a little quick quote or something. Like yeah. That. Like, I saw, like, little quotes here and there. Other than that, really nothing. But I don't blame them not really being on uh, Lorwyn, because uh, Lorwyn and Shadowmoor is the same plane, but one's in Eternal Summer, the other's in Eternal Darkness. They weren't on the Eternal Summer plane. They're in, they're deep in the caves of Lorwyn. And it makes sense that they want to go outside because they'd be blinded. So that makes sense. But when it became Eternal Darkness... They have one where it's just like sometimes their dwarves get big and it's like, okay, you got to stand in front of the cave. You can't fit in the cave, so you guard the cave. There was another one where it's just like, he's just like, nah, the dwarf life's not for me. I'm going to be like a dwarf assassin on the land, you know. And But then, you know, then the rest of them are miners, you know. They kind of do their own thing. Miners, the, forgers. Yeah. So I don't blame, even though that was supposed to be the first fairy tale plane and they they snubbed the dwarves, but they didn't do them dirty. You know, it made sense for the plane. Then it would take all the way to Keladesh to do it, because they said that they didn't want dwarves to be a stereotype, which was kind of created by World of Warcraft. Oh, well, yeah, but they brought in goblins, orcs, elves, mm -hmm. humans. Yeah. Oh, uh, what, griffins? Yeah. But, um, and so they made them a stereotype. Wizards? <laughs> Uh, the only stereotype you could really make them, which is that um, they're great engineers, um, they like building stuff. They're great fighters. Uh, they are great. Actually, a lot of them were used as guards on uh, Kaladesh, and um, only one of them really held a high position in it, because the world was really controlled by humans and uh, Vidalkin, and... Uh, like, the elves, they didn't really were interested in power, they were just interested in making pretty machines. Sounds like them. And um, the dwarves just wanted work, because that's who they're, they work. But uh, Shrom, uh, who was the head of pretty much civil engineering for the whole plane, you know, it's just like, okay, you put these pipes here, this is how you build these streets, you know, he is the architect of the cities, because he's the guy who knows it. So he's actually really cool. And he's the one who will be the precursor of what they do with dwarves now. We'll see what they do. I'm not yeah. holding my breath. Well, uh, he favors um, auras, which is magical enchantments, mm -hmm. uh, which I will talk later about D&D with dwarves being able to do magical yeah, enchantments. Yeah, they're able to imbue certain items with magical, magical abilities. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, in Dark <coughs> Dragons 3.5, uh, Races of Stone, it shows that there's uh, uh, dwarf craftsmen that can make uh, it so amazing with like sigils and all that kind of stuff that they don't actually put any magic into it. It's made so well, magic goes into it and it is enchanted. Mm -hmm. And so like that's how good of craftsmen they are. They are actually very perfectionist. Like if you're gonna do it, you do it the best you can. Oh yeah, 
dwarves are experts in making jewels, crabs, or magical rings. Yeah. I believe the rings of doom. Okay. Were forged somewhere around there, you know. Yeah. Except for that dude, he forged his own ring, you know, the one ring. Yeah, well, the the um, the elf, the best craftsman elf made the one ring. Um, and I believe was assassinated after that? Yeah, I, I'm not really big on elf. Like, the dwarves, like, in Shadowrun are great. You yeah. get to play that game. It's a futuristic game. Uh, dwarves are more techies, gun mm-hmm. makers. Very cool. I mean, like, the dwarves just only get snubbed in Magic. It's yeah. As far as World of Warcraft, D&D, other games. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're always there. Yeah. I mean, they've made novels, books. And it's just, it's just funny how Magic just doesn't... I don't know why. I mean, they, they've done they're, so many they're different things. They're trying to change that around, but they're baby-stepping it, which I'm fine with baby steps. They're trying to get it right. Yeah, I but they've done gonna... angels, demons, dragons. I could sit here and yeah. list off all the mystical D&D stuff yeah. that they did, and they didn't want to do dwarves because it was a stereotype. Come on, man. Yeah. Like, and, uh, well, also, I think they couldn't find their proper place in uh, the uh, color pie because on Kaladesh... All the dwarves are white, except for two of them are white red. We'll just blend them, you know. And um, well, that's what they're going to do with the newest set, Kaldheim. But I'm almost there. Well, they have different elves, you know. They have like a blue elf and a, you know. Yeah. Well, they don't have any pure blue elves. They have black elves. Yes, they have black elves. Uh, they don't have any pure red elves. They have green red. They have green yeah, blue. Yeah, that, that's my point, though. They can. I don't. Yeah, I. It... They at least have hybrid color, a uh, green white for elves, but um, yeah. So they were changing the color formula for them, which makes sense because they're uh, big on community, yo, know, and which is what uh, white is all about is community protection. And then um, later, you next see them on Eld- Eldrain, which is the f- uh, the grim fairy tale and. Uh, Arthurian legend wow. um, and they only printed four and a half dwarves in it I was a little disappointed there wasn't more uh, they did do good they had uh, a great uh, dwarf leader that is actually a really good card uh, Throbane Throbrand Throbrand mm, yeah where uh, he makes your red sources deal two more damage mm, not like bad. not just the creatures but also your spells yeah, but there was no chief. They made like a goblin king. They made an elf chief. They made a uh, that would be Belthar, which he was a barbarian lord. dwarf, yeah. uh, lord. But yeah, dwarves didn't get a plus one plus one though. Yeah, but a uh, uh, throwback was soldiers. I can't remember his name. He they uh, people consider him a red lord. So he's not just lord of dwarves. He's lord of red. No. Oh. Yeah, um, they made uh, the seven dwarves because Grimm's fairy tale. Well, I mean, you could play up to seven of them instead of four. And for each one of them in play, you get plus one, plus one. And there's a gimmicky deck where uh, it's uh, red-blue, and they play clones in it. So they keep on cloning the seven dwarfs. So you have, like, ten or fifteen seven dwarfs out there, and they're all, like, ten tens or fifteen fifteens. So. I guess. That's okay. I mean, yeah, I just like to see more characters, more, you know. Like, yeah. with the elves, I can, I can open one of my elf decks right now, and I have, like, 20 different elves. Yes. Going. I, um, pictures, different abilities, everything. Yeah. And so now with Keladesh, what's huge is that they are more of a prominent race and they have an identity. So now they are white-red. And they have multiple classes. They could be clerics, they could be uh, warriors, soldiers, uh, berserkers. Um, Sean originally was an advisor. And um, so what their shtick is, actually what a uh, strong stick is where they like uh, equipment, vehicles, and auras. Yeah, I've heard of that. The yeah, vehicle, so the vehicle dwarves. Yeah, and also treasure because they mine. So that's actually a very brilliant thing. And so it's actually really cool. They have their own plane, uh, uh, their own realm in the plane because um, uh, I'm bumping the, the, the Norse realm. Has uh, just like how uh, Norse mythology has the world tree yeah. with all the different realms. There's planes just like that. Cold time. There we go. And so the dwarves have their own, and it's sort of the white red uh, realm in the plane. And yeah, they're you know they make the best stuff, just like Norse mythology. You know, it's like how you know they made Mjolnir. Mjolnir. You know, Nefenheim. Yeah, it's Nefenheim. Yeah, and so. They actually seem 
really cool, and I'm very interested to see what they do in the future if they keep this up. I see, do I told like. You I was educated. Yeah, I do really like the white red identity that they got for them because white really fit well with that whole family and community thing. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, and uh, but red they are part of the mountain. And so while they're not the most passionate, but like I said, there's barbarians of them, so there's uh, berserkers. All because they're normally not doesn't mean they can't be. True. Well, we'll see what happens with magic. I, Like I said, I, I there was a previous episode where I've dumped on magic, and mm -hmm. I still, I'm, he's optimistic. We'll wait and see. I am a big fan of dwarves. Um, if you play WoW, I mean, they're great characters to play. Yeah. Uh, the Hunter's one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. I love that big old blunderbuss. Yeah. It's cool they ride goats. Um, the dwarves are just awesome. I think they're just an, an overlooked race for so many years in magic. Mm -hmm. They've done everything else, literally. Yeah. And you would think in the 20 years they would have at least spotlighted the dwarves more. I mean, you know what? Let's dunk on the elves a little bit more. In this in cold time, this is the second time they're going to have the elves be green, black. Because they're dicks. Like, even magic knows elves are dicks. On Dominaria, where they're just green, from Yalvamaya, they're dicks. Like, Elitist dicks. Yeah. I mean, one of the few times that they're actually really cool is on Keladesh. You know, the rest of the planes, they're, they're jerks. They really are. They're elitists. As a matter of fact, um, Lorowin, uh, all other species were eye blights. They cared great about beauty. Everything else that wasn't beautiful literally needed to be murdered. They would go out hunting goblins because they're ugly. That was the reason they would hunt them, because they're ugly. And so they, they were basically the fashion them. police. Yeah, and matter of fact, um, if, if there was like a beautiful elf, of course they'd be elevated to high society. Um, you just give them a little scar. Uh, there's actual assassins called scar makers, where just a little scar, boom, you're a peasant, because you have a little scar. You're not beautiful anymore. Wow. Um, Nyssa supposedly visited them. On, uh, and Saul is like, oh my god, like I'm racist. They're super racist. I need to stop being racist. That's how racist they were. That's uh, amazing. Uh, an elf supremacist stopped being racist because of how horrible they were. Yeah. That'll teach you something. <laughs> yes. Um, so They kind of remind me of the Vulcans and the Romulans. Yeah. So, you know, because they're, they're, they're the same race. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have yeah, the same yeah, descendants. Yeah. Just... Romulans are sort of dickish in some ways that Vulcans aren't, and Vulcans are dickish in some ways that Romulans aren't. Yeah. But I they're mean, all dickish with pointy ears and green blooded bastards. Yeah. Vulcans are another one. I, full Ma Hank McCoy fan. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that means? Google that shit. Yeah. I really enjoyed the Deep Space Nine episode where, like, the uh, the crew were, like, challenging the Vulcans to, like, different things. And they were yeah, baseball. Everyone. Yeah. And except they cut at one point, and they're like, what do we care that you got one point? We still won, but like they they were annoyed how happy the humans were to get that mm -hmm. one point. Where it's just like, no, you should not be happy that you lost. It's a moral victory, that's why. Yeah, and they didn't get that, but they were still annoyed by it. Well, it's like sometimes when you lose, you win, and when you win, you lose. Yeah. And then sometimes you can apologize without apologizing. Sometimes. Just ask my several ex-wives. But um, also, I want to say... The check is in the mail. Dungeons and Dragons... I really like playing dwarf. Yeah, they're really cool characters. You can play them a lot of ways, except not really sorcerer. They don't no. fit sorcerer. No, they they, their society normally doesn't do wizards, which is weird. They live two, three hundred years. They have plenty of time to do it. But a lot of wizards are isolationists. You know, they they need time to focus. Yeah, dwarves study. magic is usually in items. Yeah, but mm -hmm. um, there's absolutely dwarf wizards, and you know, but most of the time they're just going to go dwarf cleric. Yeah. But they're actually very good at both. It's interesting. Like I, that's why I'm hoping, like in the set, something changes or coming yeah. up or something happens. It, it's looking good. It's looking right. For years, I just want them to make a dwarf deck. Um, I have a vehicle that's mostly dwarf. Yeah, deck. you were telling me about. As a matter of fact, I completely forgot that they have. Um, they do have a dwarf lord. That's not just a dwarf lord. It's also a vehicle lord. That she gives plus one, plus one, two vehicles and dwarves. And I believe once she attacks, you get to search your library for like a dwarf or a vehicle. So she's actually really good. Uh, that is useful. Uh, Def uh, Defelia? Defelia? Something like that. 
It's kind of like Daphne, but with a ah, Leah at the end. It's like Daphne. Def- Daphne. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's been a few prominent ones. Nowhere near as much as the elves. Um, now all we have to do is realize that magic's very racist against orcs. There's less orcs than there are. Um, mm. Yeah. I don't give a damn about orcs. <laughs> no. Oh, no, I'm just saying. Yeah. But there, there's been a fair amount of orcs in the older sets. Yeah. Um, and then there were a few on Ixalan, and um, there were a few on um, uh, Tarkir. I believe that's it. All right. Yeah. And as you guys know, this is the Comic Outlaw. This is Outlaw's Corner. And this is our little spiel about dwarves. If you have any questions, hit us up. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Later. Yeah.